Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Azure Every Day with Pragmatic Works. Uh, I'm Chris Saferla, Senior Principal Consultant over here. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about are the five stages of cloud adoption, okay? Um, really, you, you see a lot more companies, a lot more enterprises starting to dip their toe in the water when it comes to cloud, um, especially with Microsoft Azure. Uh, the, the amount of uh, growth has been incredible and exponential, <clears throat> and Microsoft has really shown their commitment to um, where, where, where they're going with their cloud infrastructure and in in, uh, their whole roadmap. Um, so that, that first stage, uh, we like to call it chaos, right? It's, uh, you know, a server dies or, or software comes to end of life or end of support. Um, there's, there's some chaos event that makes you start looking at alternative ways to serve, you know, your customers, your internal employees, whoever, whoever that audience might be. And so, uh, you know, that the, the cloud is now a viable option for a lot of businesses and they have to really consider it. So what they do is as step two is they start to generate awareness, right? They ramp up their knowledge around the cloud. They, uh, they start looking into some training. They do some hackathons. Uh, you know, they start to get a little bit of hands on. They start to understand how it works. Um, they, they might do a POC. Um, and, and, or, you know, a pilot program, something, you know, um, very small, uh, maybe set up Azure Active Directory to sync with your on-premises Active Directory, um, you know, those kinds of events. And what those lead to is the third step, which is security concerns, right? Most companies get hung up here on the security aspects of it. Now, what I can tell you is uh, Microsoft has made a full commitment to security. They spend the most out of any company in the entire world on security, over a billion dollars spent in 2017. And it's, you know, for a couple of reasons. One, they know that they are a large attack vector for a lot of companies, right? Uh, so, you know, the hackers want to come after Microsoft because they're the big fish in the pond. Um, but also, uh, they know that it's a requirement for customers. So they've gone so far as to get 72 government and uh, standard standardization certificates, whereas the next competitor is Azure with AWS with only 44. So you can tell that Microsoft has really made a commitment to this. Um, you know, and, and, and the idea is to help people get over their fears uh, and, and really help to understand um, that when you've got an entire team of security experts watching your data all the time, watching what the servers are doing all the time, plus implementing uh, best practices and creating new ways and new policies to help people avoid um, any kind of breach even further, uh, it really sets up a, a great landscape. And that kind of leads into that fourth area where you get over the, the security concerns. Okay, I, you know, I believe that Microsoft is, is uh, trustworthy and, and they're going to do what I need in, in my Azure public cloud space. And, uh, and, and then it comes to governance, right? Um, you need to develop best practices, policies, procedures. So that's really that fourth stage where you start to think about things like liability and government regulation, policies, procedures. So you need to start to develop those kinds of plans. And the best part is that when you start looking at uh, the platform as a service offering for Microsoft or, or software as a service offering, and even some of the infrastructure as a service offerings, they are offering some best in class services and they're managing a good portion of that security for you. Okay. And then the last stage, you know, you've got, you've got your cloud environment up and running, you're using a hybrid model or a full cloud, you know, um, and that last stage is, is optimization, right? So how do you make your environment run as well as you possibly can, giving it the best performance, but also doing it at a cost that helps you save money and become a differentiator in your space against your competitors, right? Um, you, you have to go through and you have to choose what those best services are. Um, you need to optimize those servers that you're using to um, you know, minimize the cost and, and the expenses. You have to constantly keep an eye on them to make sure that you're not uh, above or below the threshold that you want those servers to run at. You know, do you need to run you know, six cores all the time 
when you're only using two cores for two hours a day and you're only spiking once a day, right? Um, just some of those things that you got to think about. And that would really be that last stage. You know, once you've got a full platform deployed, now you want to optimize that and make sure that you're not overspending uh, and, and you're running as, as optimally as you can. We are helping out a lot of customers with questions like around all of these topics, and we're really happy to help out. So if you have any more questions or you'd just like some more information, um, feel free to click the link below, get in touch with us here at uh, Pragmatic Works, and we're more than thrilled to help you out. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.